We're going to continue with our lesson on covalent compounds today. Your learning goal is posted. It's the same one we've seen previously. We talked about it with ionic compounds in terms of naming and formula writing. Last time you learned how to draw compounds that had all single bonds. And from the do now activity, it looks as if you're quite comfortable with that. Today we'll take it a step farther and we'll draw compounds that have multiple bonds, that is doubles, triples, and it may have singles as well. We'll get a lot of practice with that, drawing some out in your classwork, but also more importantly, drawing them up in the lab and constructing them. And that will really help you in terms of drawing shape, etc. Our main question today is actually going to be how to draw the compounds and then we'll get into molecular geometry and polarity as well. Listed here is what you need to be successful. And again, by the very end, you wanna be able to draw structural formulas, not just for singles, but also with multiple bonds. We're gonna learn about isomers today. Next time we'll get into shapes and polarities. We're going to start to construct the compounds using molecular model kits. I'll show you that today. Next week we'll get into naming and formula writing for the covalent compounds and we'll compare and contrast them with ionic. That's what's really tricky and that's going to make or break you in terms of your test because when you mix it all up it's a little tricky but we'll practice a lot and I feel very confident you all can get in this three or four range. With a four, you really need to be able to explain it to others, and that'll be the key. So what we're going to talk about today is how to draw compounds when you have multiple bonds. It's a little trickier. We're going to work through these examples, and you can see there's not a lot to cover. But it takes a while, and it takes a tremendous amount of practice, and that's what we want to provide you with today. The steps for drawing the compounds are indicated here. Same thing we saw previously. Figure out total valence electrons. Draw the skeletal structure. Place the valence electrons. Check the number. Change shared pairs into sticks, which will still represent a shared pair, just in a different format. For multiple bonds, which we're going to hit now, you're going to see that you're going to have lone electrons, not a lone pair, but a single electron on two or more atoms. You will need to move those lone electrons to a position that can accommodate a multiple bond, never between a hydrogen and something, for this year not between a halogen and something and then you'll change those multiple shared pairs into bonds to represent multiple bonds. We're gonna walk through a bunch of easy examples first and then we'll get into far more challenging ones and we'll also introduce the concept known as isomers. Although you've seen isomers before in biology but you may not have realized they were isomers at the time and we'll be sure to point that out. And again, if you have your rules in front of you, it will be helpful to you as we get started. So the first compound is oxygen. First thing we're gonna do is get total valence electrons. We have two oxygen each with six. We talked about this last time, oxygens in group 16, six valence electrons for a total of 12 valence electrons. We put the atoms side by side And now we're going to place the valence electrons. Again, the first one always goes between 1, 2, 3, 4. Now I'll pair, but I don't pair between 5, 6. 
I could have done it here and here, here and here, it doesn't matter. The other oxygen has six too. The first one goes between. And what we have for the first time now, we didn't have it previously, is we have a lone electron here and here. Lone electrons are lonely. They make friends and they move to a position that can accommodate multiple bonds. Oxygen, nitrogen, sulfur, phosphorus, carbon can form double and sometimes triple bonds. So we're going to move these electrons between the O's and we will get two shared pairs of electrons. This will be two shared pairs of electrons. And instead of making all those dots, we replace those two shared pairs of electrons with two sticks. I didn't maintain my color here. I'm sorry. I just got carried away. And that's oxygen gas. You have here a double bond, which is an example of a multiple bond. We'll do a few with dots, and then I'll show you how you really can just jump to sticks. Questions on the first one? On the second one, we've got C2H4. This actually is ethene or ethylene. This is the gas that fruits give off to assist in their ripening process. Same starting point, two times four plus four times one is 12 valence electrons. You know that hydrogens cannot be central atoms, so the C's will go side by side when you have an even number of carbons, you usually have a symmetrical type structure. When you have an odd number of carbons and multiple bonds, you usually don't have a symmetrical structure. Carbon has four valence electrons, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Hydrogen has how many? One. I sort of put that one on the wrong side. It's hanging out. Let me get it on the other side so it's easier for you to see. Sorry. There we go. Much better. Now what do you see on top of each carbon? A lone electron. Lone electrons are lonely. They make friends and they move between atoms that can accommodate more than one bond. Never, ever, ever between a hydrogen and something. Ever. Hydrogen forms one single bond. And now what's going to happen here is you are going to have two shared pairs of electrons between the carbons. Here 
here's your Lewis dot structure. And we're going to change those two shared pairs into two sticks to represent a double bond. C2H4-ethylene. Now for some of you, these dots will drive you nuts. And if you want to go from the molecular formula directly to sticks, that's fine. Get a count because you don't want to miss out on lone pairs if they exist. You've got CCHHHH. You know hydrogen forms a single bond. How many bonds does carbon want to form? Four. That's why you need the double bond there, complete carbon's octet. And that may be much easier for you. I personally don't do all this. It drives me nuts. I go like that. But that count will be important, and you'll see why in the next few examples. Next one is N2 for nitrogen gas, the chief component in air. 2 times 5 is 10. Where did I get 5 from? <coughs> Nitrogen's in group 15, 5 valence electrons. You've got it. Put the N side by side. I'm going to show you dots one more time here. One, two, three, four, double up. One, two, three, four, double up. Now this time you don't just have two lone electrons, but rather four. They move into the middle and pair and what you get now is another type of multiple bond. <coughs> and what type of bond is this? A triple bond. <coughs> so this is three shared electron pairs. and you have nitrogen gas. And you'll make these in the lab. I can show you a few now. You can visually imagine that a triple bond is stronger than a double. You have three bonds holding the atoms together. And what you'll also see when you construct these in the lab is you will see that a triple bond is going to be shorter than a double. and a double will be shorter than a triple. When you use the molecular model kits, it's really important you don't yank the springs, but rather just turn the ball in a clockwise fashion. Otherwise, the springs get all stretched out. For example, this would represent 
hydrogen, single bond. Here is oxygen gas, O2, double bond. And if my alignment is good, I'll start these on the lines here. You can see that the double bond, well, as I moved it over, it moved. You can see the double bond is going to be shorter than the single. And then here's the triple bond with nitrogen. And again, you can see the bond length is essentially even shorter. So strongest, weakest, longest, shortest. Let's take a look at another one. And again, this is going to just take a lot of practice, which you are going to get. We've got N2 dinitrogen tri, I'm sorry, dinitrogen difluoride. I'll teach you how to name these on Monday. Get your count. Which atom? or atoms will be central. The nitrogen. Typically the atoms with the lower electronegativities are central. For your purposes this year, halogens will be terminal, one single bond, three lone pairs. So we're gonna go F, N, N, F. Let's try and jump to sticks and see if we can do it that way. If not, we'll go back to dots. We had indicated the other day and just mentioned that halogens form one single bond and have three lone pairs. Now you have a chart that shows that nitrogen likes to form how many bonds? Remember, you can do eight minus the number of valence electrons. Nitrogen's in group 15 with five valence electrons and eight minus five is three. So it has one here. What type of bond do you think is going between the ends? It only wants to form a total of three bonds and it's got one here. So you're gonna put a double. Now, does nitrogen have a complete octet of electrons around it? Two, four, six. No, what's it missing? It's missing two electrons or a lone pair of electrons here, here. Let's swing to the dots for a sec because I don't think you saw it and that's okay. If we do the dot method, We've got one, two, three, four. You can pair up on the top or the bottom, not in between. One, two, three, four, five. Each fluorine has seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Where are these lone electrons going to move? In between here for a double bond. Nitrogen wants to form three bonds, one lone pair in most instances. There are some exceptions. You can go top, top, bottom, bottom. Typically, you're going to put them as far apart as possible, but we'll get into that next time. The next one is C3H6O. Get your count. We 
know H has to be a terminal, so I'm going to try C, 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 O. Now what do we want to do? I'm switching to a pencil. Let's try anything. Volunteer. Nothing to lose. And there's more than one right answer, too. Um, Go ahead, Kathy. Um, I know you have to place the volunteer at times. Do you want to do dots or you want to try and just stick it out? Um, I think I can do dots. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, where do you want to put the H's? For those of you trying to draw this, do it in pencil. Um, and then all of the, oh, well, I know that there's two single bonds that form in between the three carbons. You want to do single, yeah. single, single here? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and then single bonds on top to connect the hydrogen to the carbon. And then the carbon on the far left. And it, there is a loan there. All right, let's take a look at what we have here and how we can problem solve. How many bonds does oxygen want to form? <coughs> Two. With how many lone pairs? Two. Two. So, right now we only have a single bond. What might we do? Which uh, which hydrogen do you want to move? The one on top of the last piece. Here? Yeah. And where do you want to move it? No, the last one is fixing. Okay. And then the last one has double bond between the carbon and the oxygen. Okay. And what else is missing on the O? So two lone pairs, right? Now, does each carbon have four bonds? Yeah. Which one doesn't? The last one. Careful here, you have one, two, three, four. So it does, right? Okay, that's all right. Do we have 24 valence electrons? Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, that's a good sign. So is this structure good? Sure it is. Is it the only structure? No. Let's try and get another one. Excellent job, Victor. Let's try another one. Who's game? How many bonds does carbon almost always form? Four. Four. So what's wrong with this guy right here? 
All right, but it's, it's not over. We still can fix it. And that's why I said do pencil. <coughs> I took away one of your H's. Where could I put it? Oh, one more opposite and C. Here? Yeah. And then still keep the double bond between the C and the L. Well, that's going to make exactly what we did previously. So, nope, it's not over though. What if we take this one away? And put it here. How can we salvage this? We have one more H and we don't have complete octets of electrons here. got it because now each carbon has four bonds oxygen has two two lone pairs what if we did this type of arrangement where do you want to put the H's Go ahead, Haley. Um, on all sides, or not on all sides. Here? No. Um, on top of the C's. On top of the C's? Yeah. And then around the O. Like on the right that has to go down. O only wants to form two bonds, two lone pairs, so don't smack three H's on it. Oh, so one H at the bottom. Okay. We need six H's, so we have two more to place. You want to put one here? Okay, and what's wrong? That's going to make five here. So what if we take this little guy off, and where could we put him? This one, right? Yeah. Why would I not want it there? Because you already have four bonds, yeah. one double and two singles, and that's another possibility. So sometimes for one molecular formula, you have multiple structural formulas, and these are called isomers. Isomers are when you have multiple structural formulas for the same molecular formula. And you actually can see isomers, for example, for glucose and fructose. They're both C6H12O6, but the way the atoms are linked together generates isomers. You can see here you've got a ring with one CH2OH off of it. Here you've got a ring with two, so their structures differ. Those are isomers. 
same molecular formula, different structural formulas. And we'll draw some more isomers in a bit. Same molecular formula, different structural formula. What you're also starting to see here is this is a little bit of trial and error. You draw it and then you move things. And that's why I do like to jump into sticks. Where the valence count is critically important is so that you don't forget any lone pairs. And when you get into more complex drawing um, in advanced chemistry, where all kinds of different things can happen, that valence count is really important. Another structure I'd like to show you, and this one you're going to see in the lab, and you probably saw it a smidgy last year. We've got CH3COOH. <coughs> this Ku group has a specific structure. It's not very often O's linked together. You do see it in hydrogen peroxide, which you'll see in the lab. This Ku structure is C double bond O, single bond OH. You want to know what that Ku looks like. You'll see it on your quiz, your test, etc. You'll see it in the lab. Now to finish this structure, what are we going to do? Go ahead, Haley. Um, you I'll got it. See. This one? Don't you need uh, three and then pairs? Oh, um, oh, oh, add all three H's. You got it. And that's actually acetic acid. You may, yeah. <laughs> Just like that. Do you recognize the coup from last year? I bet you you've seen it though. I'll show you. <coughs> What is the building block of proteins? Starts with an A. Amino acids. An amino acid always has this general structure. The R group is different for the 20 amino acids. If you had the simplest one, glycine, the R would be an H. And you have this Ku group. And I'm drawing it to illustrate its shape. You'll see that more in the lab. But that's an amino acid where you have an amine group and a Ku group. Let's take a look at the next one. You don't have to know that. I just wanted you to maybe, do, you remember this last from last year, yes? You saw the structure? Yes, no? You learned about proteins. You definitely saw the structure of an amino acid. I know you did. I taught bio for years. I know it's changed, but you definitely saw this structure because I've seen what they, they're doing. Let's take a look at this one. <coughs> what do you think? Come on, Andorra, you do it. Um, it's the C's in a line. And the N. And then... 
have very few H's. How many bonds does N like to form? Three. Let's give it a triple because we don't have many H's. What else will be on the N? Um, a lone pair. You got it to complete the octet. Carbon wants to form how many bonds? Four is correct. You have three, so this bond has to be one. single. Good. You only have one H, so what are you thinking this bond has to be? Uh, double. Where do you want to put the H? Above the last C. You'll see why it actually goes here in a sec. What are we missing? The four, um, the four balls of the carbon. Right, so this shouldn't be a double, but rather a, a You got it, and you worked through it. Good job. And again, that count will be important because if you don't do it, you might forget <coughs> the lone pair on N. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. And this one's not going to have isomers. The reason why I did this here and not above it is when you have a triple bond, you have no choice but to put things in a line. And you'll see that when we discuss shape. How about, do you want to do this one together or you want to try? Yeah. Try? Draw two isomers for this. And I just want to remind you or ask you, phosphorus likes to form how many bonds? Three. Three. One lone pair. Give it a shot. You can check your neighbors once you draw yours. There are many possibilities.
And again, always make sure carbon has four bonds. <coughs> These are just many that you could do. And initially I drew one, I didn't like it, so I just started again. Make sure carbon always has four bonds, phosphorus <coughs> or nitrogen, three bonds, one lone pair. Each carbon has four bonds. Each carbon has four bonds. Phosphorus, three, lone pair. Each carbon has four bonds. Phosphorus three, one lone pair. And there's probably many, many others that you've drawn. Take a look at your neighbors, and that's exactly how I grade it. I look how many bonds you have, and I count your valence electron. Ms. Duckett, yep. Not necessarily. Um, you still have to make sure that you have the correct number of bonds. But on the flip side of that, if you don't have the correct number of valence electrons, it can't be correct. <coughs> All right. This is how you draw compounds with multiple bonds. I think with some practice, you will master the concept. Usually the kids like drawing compounds. They think it's very fun. There's one more in your notes. <coughs> And we'll give it a try in a couple minutes. What I highly recommend you do for next time is classwork 2.3, all of number two now. And you already did some of number two. Don't do the back side yet. We haven't gone over that. Now, in number two, all I want you to do is draw the structural formula. You don't know how to do shape or polarity yet. We'll learn how to do that next time. What we're also going to do is switch gears now, and I'll let you draw all the compounds for the lab. <coughs> I'm guessing that'll take you about a half an hour, and then you'll be able to work on your classwork so that hopefully you don't have much homework. But I highly recommend that by next time, you can draw compounds. Next time we'll go over shape and polarity. They look really hard, but I promise you'll find them easy and you should have mastery of it. Again, you wanna make sure you can draw compounds for next time. This will really help with your shape and polarity.